you're not selling them a massage, you're selling them that feeling special for that hour, rather than you're looking after them for that hour, rather than them looking after everyone else. So you're not even selling a massage. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Massage and Physical Therapist Roundtable Talk Show. Uh, in the last episode, we discussed marketing and how you can add value rather than discount and how to get prepared for the festive season. So if you missed that, go check it out. It was a good one. Um, in each episode, we pick a topic as chosen by you and share our thoughts from different perspectives within the therapy world. I'm your host, Kate Brown, and on our panel today, we have Anna Maria Mazzieri, soft tissue therapist. We have Chris Haddon, massage therapist and reflexologist. We have Tamer Morsi, massage therapist. And we have Imogen Tester, massage therapist. So thank you all for joining us today. And um, today we are asking the question, do therapists need a niche? So I'm um, really looking forward to hearing what you'll have to say about this one. Um, so uh, Imogen, I think we're going to start with you. And um, so I'll start by asking, have you chosen a niche or a specialism? Uh, and if so, why did you choose that? Yes, although it's morphed and changed as it's gone on. Um, when I first started, I chose niche. I, I wanted to work with runners just because I really like running. So that was my niche. And I concentrated on working with a lot of local clubs. And it really set me up when I was very first starting and got a lot of clients who, and the best thing about that was not only were they, was my business building and I was getting a lot of clients, but I got to talk, talk about running all day. <laughs> so it was fantastic. So that's the nice thing about having a niche that generally you would think that your niche is something that you were then interested in. And because you're interested in it, it shows you have genuine passion for it. <clears throat> And you will also be working with people who a like you and what you do and, and what you have to bring and, and you're going to like them. So if you have a niche, then you're just going to have a nice, a nicer day. <laughs> it has changed as time has gone on. Um, and um, my I, it's changing again at the moment. I'm about to have a sort of huge sort of rehaul of, of, of everything in the way I market myself because I don't think I'm that same practitioner that I was when I first started. So I am sort of in mid flux of niche, I suppose. Uh, but I suppose it's my main niche really is that whatever treatment I do, I like it to be quite luxurious. So even my runners, when they come in, I have the towels, the sheets, the candles, the music, the whole shebang. <laughs> so I, I tend to attract clients within that running niche that maybe like that kind of thing and want a bit of a chill out. They don't just want the sports massage, but they want a bit of a chill out. And that has then morphed my niche into, in, into more sort of relaxing treatments because I do the holistic as well. And oh yeah, it's, it's all changing again, but so definitely your, your niche can change and morph it as, as you as you do as well. But I think especially when you're starting out, it's it's a really good idea to build your practice. And then I suppose what I found that as you go on, you almost become your niche because people get to know about you. They get to know how you work and what you stand for, and they will come to you because of that um, more. So it, it kind of possibly changes as you become more, more established. And I don't just work with runners and people liking to be relaxed. I have a lot of people who play golf, again, because they tend to want that little bit of luxury with their treatment. They don't want maybe a cold clinic floor and stuff. Um, and then, you I, you know, I, I do have a few clients who are more gym based, but that's not really my thing. That's not my big interest, but that doesn't mean I won't treat them. It's just not where I would pitch my marketing. Yeah, great. No, I think that's um, that's brilliant. Sort of, you, you do tend to flow off of what you know and sort of what comes naturally to you. So develop to develop that as your sort of niche, or at least your initial niche. Um, as you said, it can sort of change um, over time, um, but it's playing to your strengths, really, isn't it? And then developing yeah. something in what you uh, are interested in and that you can learn in and get more experience yeah. in yourself. In, in, especially when you're starting as well. If you have a, a, 
a subject that you mainly market to, then you can set yourself different from everyone else. And that means that you can set your prices differently. So if there is a general, if, you, if there are people charging very stupid low prices in your area, you can set your prices higher because you will become the go-to person for that group of people, whoever they are. Um, and so that, you know, they will pay that extra money because they're coming to see the person who knows the most about that subject, doesn't need to be knowing the most about massage, even if you're new and just starting up, but you'll really have that genuine passion and knowledge about your subject, whatever that is. And that will set you apart from just everyone else in that area. So you, you can genuinely charge what you feel you're worth more easily rather than just trying to sort of average out the prices in the local area. So I think that's another, another good thing about niching. And, and then also when, you know who you're selling to and, and then I really know down to where they might hang out, what their interests are. You know exactly where you're going to market. You're not going to waste time or money marketing where you're really not going to get your kind of people and you can give them what they want. So you're going to be selling them the, their solution to their problem, for want of a better phrase. Someone once said to me, you want to sell the sizzle, not the sausage. <laughs> so if, if, for example, they're young mums who are tired and stressed, you're going to be selling them time and you're going to be selling them being the focus being on them and them being the special person for that hour or what have you. You're not selling them a massage. You're selling them that feeling special for that hour rather than you're looking after them for that hour rather than them looking after everyone else. So you're not even selling a massage. So that's that's a nice thing you can do if you you know if you really know your niche like right down to the nth degree. I absolutely love that an analogy, and I'm going to have to steal that for my own use. But sell the sizzle, not the sausage. Not the sausage. That's great. I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're quite right. Sort of having a, a specialism um, can add value, um, and um, yeah, help you identify your target audience. Um, better because you know exactly who you're selling to so brilliant thank you that was a that was a great start so um who would like to take over does anyone want to carry on from Imogen Tamer lovely off you go <laughs> hi uh okay so when I first started massage again like Amy uh, was mentioning I just started with everything that I'm doing just doing Swedish deep tissue uh, lymphatic drainage, uh, but then I was drawn to the trigger point therapy. And that helped me when I read a lot about trigger point therapy before getting my training. And once I, I was sure that it was, that's what I'm passionate about. That's something that I, I like the challenge. I like always to, to be challenged. That's what makes me feel alive. Basically, uh, making a lot of money. That's not, that's not, that's not enough drive for me to to work and to keep working for years uh, however making something happen that that basically that what makes me alive uh, and i specialize basically in remedial treatments uh, so basically i go when when my clients when they have when someone wants a massage just a relaxing massage i'm not the first one that they think about but when they have a problem in their body and they want to fix it, I'm the one that they call. Uh, and that helped me a lot. Just working with this type of clients takes a lot, yeah, takes a little bit of time to build a, a good clientele within this niche, basically. Uh, but at the same time, I don't feel that I'm working. I feel that I'm enjoying doing whatever I'm doing. Uh, my treatments, I just explore. I don't go with 10 solutions to the client. I just go and the body is like a painting for me. The painting should go in a certain way. There is a certain way for the painting. And basically with, with palpation, with my hands, I feel the painting. I, I touch the painting. And whatever is not right, that's what I'm fixing, basically. I'm not fixing the body. I'm, I'm removing the blockage of the healing that the body is, is the self-healing that the body is doing. Um, so that basically that created that created in my clients' minds that created that oh, when I go to the GP or to the physio or to the uh, osteopath or chiropractor and they come fix me oh I that's an option that I can get to help to fix my problem. 
Uh, at the same time, I'm coming again. My background is uh, I, I worked for about 12 years in in uh, in the corporate world. So basically, I was sitting on an office there for nine, eight, nine hours a day, and I felt oh, back then I, I now I remember that I felt the type of pain that I felt in my upper back and my lower back, and then I tried to understand more about it, what causes it, and the more I work with people with 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 the more I deliver remedial treatment, the more I understand I, every single time with every single treatment, I feel that I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly about to understand it right. Um, and basically, it helps to understand what, what different lifestyles can cause this problem to happen, what, what different aftercare advice I can give to clients, how I can give them something that they can relate to, not something that I believe that, oh, that would, that would work for you. Uh, I remember Anna mentioned before that we have no idea about pain. We don't understand pain. The one who's suffering pain, he's the one, or she's the one who understands it better. And I totally believe in that. We can't, we can't feel what the client is feeling because we are just totally different entity, basically. But when, when I see 10 people who are suffering from the same thing exactly, I'll have an idea about what can lead to that. I'll have an idea about how for me during the treatment, how to fix it. And I'll have an idea about what advice would suit the client more. If the client is not moving a lot, if the client uh, does, doesn't exercise, what else can I give them? So basically having specializing in certain type of treatment at massage there are a lot of different modalities and each one of them got its own benefits there is no we can't compare lymphatic drainage to remedial treatment or uh, crane uh, i wouldn't say craniosacral uh, reflexology to relaxing we can't compare that's just totally different different benefits uh, and different needs um when when you work in something and you keep doing it over and over again no matter how much you know about it you are getting better in massage it's 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 the type of job that you do physically you do it and practice is what what basically leads to perfection and there's no perfection there's no no such thing it's just always getting better there's no point where it's perfect um but yeah, just back, back to the point, when I go to my clients, they refer to me. It's a very effective marketing as well. Um, specializing in remedial treatment, that gets me more clients who are asking for remedial treatment. So I, I don't get out of, out of my zone, out of my, my speciality. Uh, when I do any type, any other type of massage, I enjoy it. Don't just, it's, it's a very different experience, but it's not, that's what I'm known for, the remedial treatments. Yeah, that's um, what you've sort of developed most within your own practice and that you have most interest in, is the sort of the remedial clinical side of, of treatments. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, and, and basically, yeah, it's just when, when people refer other people to me, they know that, okay, we're not talking about someone that they have no clue about whether I'm going to do the massage nice or not. I'm, I'm just, again, throughout the practice, throughout focusing on only this type of treatment, I've, I've developed um, a measuring system, to, to ass assessment system to make sure that the clients see the benefit as well. And throughout time, when they see the benefit, just, oh, that's just, it's not only what I feel, that's actually an improvement. And that yeah, I think that's so important to have like markers when you're treating someone remedially that you can um, go back and, you know, uh, see their improvement and discuss that with the client and whether that's sort of pain markers or, uh, you know, postural changes, but you have something to show uh, the progression because sometimes it's, you know, a slow progression or a subtle progression that is not always obvious over time. But to have those markers is, is really useful to have. 100%. 100% totally agree. Having a niche, I was thinking at first um, when I was planning for, for this, I was thinking, oh God, have I even got a niche? The Massage and Physical Therapist talk show is brought to you by Massage Warehouse. 
run by therapists for therapists, we're committed to solving common issues you might encounter in your massage therapy practice. Like Richard Melrose H2 Oral Water Dispersible Massage Oil. Are you fed up with your massage oil marking your covers and sheets as well as your client's clothes? Our Melrose oil dissolves in water without the need for harsh detergents, giving you the perfect massage oil without leaving a trace. For more information on this product, simply visit our website www.massagewarehouse.co.uk. Now, back to the show. So I just pick up on um, a couple of your points. Um, so uh, your sort of your inspiration for working remedially was from working in the corporate world yourself and sort of having some of those um, symptoms that you treat so often now. So that's kind of that's um, inspired your practice as it is today. Is that would you say that's correct? You're sort of yeah. Your, your I would background. say it was it was a natural progression. I, yeah. I was led to that, uh, to this point, just from a past experience. When I read about the treatment, that's where it hit me straight away, every single type of pain that I used to have. And just, okay, so why don't I specialize in that? Everyone is, everyone is having some sort of pain. Not everyone is paying attention enough to the body. So, okay, so let me work in this yeah. area then. And then you start to identify, as you said, those sort of patterns over time that you start to see similarities in people. Um, and then that sort of builds on what you're able to offer because you have an idea of what, uh, what to look out for. You know, maybe you see a similar uh, pattern of sort of muscle tension that you see in, in other clients who have a, sort of a similar job or whatever it is. So in, in sort of able to identify those uh, those links I suppose um, oh yeah and by the end also, of the day it's all muscle fibers so it's it's as simple as that so it's all muscle fibers so no matter how it reacts to the treatment it's going to be very similar everybody is different but the reaction itself is going to be very similar so happy days lovely thanks Tama. <laughs> go on Chris <laughs> I was going to say I didn't want to be rude and I know you could have gone first but I'm happy to to talk um yeah for me niche like having a niche I was thinking at first um when I was planning for for this I was thinking oh god have I even got a niche and then I realized obviously there's obviously the the niche of of which treatment you provide and yeah when I first started out you know like deep tissue massage for instance was my thing that was the thing people all came to me for over the years that has just changed um because i got I, I kind of not in a disrespectful way but i get a bit bored just doing the same thing all the time um i'll happily do it if every one of my clients books in for for deep tissue then that's completely fine you know i'm i'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm seeing different people so that's that's nice um but i do like the the sort of variety of oh i'm doing a reflexology treatment now um Oh, I'm doing a Reiki treatment, you know, or, oh, I've got a bit of a mix today. Um, oh, that person's having hoppy ear candling. You, you, know, you know, it's quite a nice, I mean, and for me, it doesn't matter what treatment I'm doing. It's spending that hour with the with the client, with what they've requested, obviously, for what I'm trained, trained in to do. But I do understand, obviously, having a niche puts you sort of, you know, there's a lot of therapists about. And if every therapist all does about 20 different varieties of, of you know treatments who do you pick who do you go to whereas if you if you're pregnant and you want a you, you know you need a, a massage therapist that specializes in pregnancy massage you'd really you'd want to go to someone that that's their thing i, I think anyway because you know that they do that a lot there it's it's a very sort of specific treatment that has to be done right um you know you can't cut corn you know cut corn and it's some you want to go to someone that's reputable for that um for me reflexology has took over quite a lot um but i do go through sort of waves um this time of year i'm just getting a lot of people booking in for reflexology and that's just just one of the things but i think for me my niche itself is is my treatment space because obviously i work from a canal boat and it's not there's not really many many other people or places doing that not near me anyway um they possibly might be in like you know more down south maybe in in london i don't know on the um canals there um but that that is kind of my niche and it's become a thing you know people come for a treatment 
whatever treatment it is, you know, that I offer, they come because a lot of the time they want to come and experience an hour just relaxing on the, on the canal boat. You know, I don't know what ideas they've got in their mind. They've seen videos, they've seen pictures online. Um, and that is a, a niche that, that, that draws people in. And, and, and then they come, they have the treatment, you know, and then they really enjoy the treatment as well. And it's like a double sort of, a, a double whammy. But, um, yeah, I mean, as I get older and I start to sort of really figure out, I mean, because I feel like I'm still quite new to this. You know, it's been, what, seven years for me? You know, a lot of people that like are therapists have been doing it 20 plus years, you know, so I've got a long, a long, long road ahead, really. And I'm sure over that time I will find find that I, I just want to be a reflexologist by this point, you know, and I might just specialise in reflexology and that is my thing. Um, but I just don't know. I, I can't decide because I do quite a lot of, of, of treatments um, and I don't actually know what my favourite is either, to be honest. <laughs> um, so I know that's probably not helped with the question, but it's my space. A bit like um, Imi was saying, you know, she treats runners or, or did as a speciality but it was her space having it as luxurious was the was 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 part of the niche you know so i guess your treatment space itself can be your niche as well as the the modality that you that you practice yeah no i love that and i, I don't think you need to have um an, a niche at all and that's kind of what this um conversation was about so i'm quite glad that you were sort of able to say that you don't you know that you don't have to because you you enjoy the variety of it um, I think probably from a, an outside perspective, uh, you could be seen to be sort of uh, your niche could be reflexology. That's kind of one of your main treatments, I guess. Um, but to you, it's having the variety. And as you said, having also just a, a really sort of quirky, different space for people to come to. And that is attractive. Like you think about going um, on an Airbnb holiday or something and, and you want to go and sit in a tree house or like do something cool something different um and being on the water is such a peaceful place to be so yeah I think that's fantastic and um yeah I think variety is the spice of life <laughs> yeah and just to go back to that quickly as well is that where I'm based in, in Poynton there is some really good um, therapists in my area and I go to see them all you know and and, the, and I'm good friends with them I've, I've become to know them quite well and it's never a competition um and I can pro I, I'm pretty certain because I know that there's some really great therapists in in my area if I, if I didn't have my niche if you like of being on the boat I probably wouldn't be as busy as I as I am now because they probably would go to you know go to them as well because they've they've got equally lovely places to work from and so yeah um yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you chris um lovely um so over to you anna maria <laughs> I love what chris said about um having a niche in terms of experience of, of, of the boat, I haven't thought about it, but actually what a great thing, actually your niche is, uh, is people that want that special experience. I thought that that is great, that is great. Um, so in personal, my personal experience, uh, my niche has become, uh, I didn't start with a niche, I, I, I started, you know, like, I was starting working from, from a clinic, so uh, I was working with people from referrals from chiropractors and other uh, professionals around me. And then slowly, slowly, over the years, my niche has become now complex uh, injuries or complex pain, persistent pain. People that uh, they might have tried different approaches with the shoulder pain and the back pain, and they found that they're not being as effective. So the kind of, I, I, I kind of, the niche chosen me instead of me choosing choosing a niche. And also it's because it's my bias. I do enjoy shoulders. I do enjoy lower back. So I research more about shoulders, I research about lower back, I keep up to date with everything, but especially with those two main areas. But if uh, I would say, I think in hindsight, I, I think having a niche, I think it's a, it's a very positive thing. In fact, I would say more than a niche is to have a clear idea of 
what our client avatar is. So, you know, what type of uh, client do we want to, what type of person do we want to work with? But also is an avatar that needs to match with the needs of the community around. So for example, here in my community where I am here, there is uh, quite a lot of people with, uh, um, because it's, it's a higher uh, demographic of elderly people. So, you know, there will be certain conditions like osteoarthritis that are much more common. So people will come to us more. So having that, working with a client, with a person or having a good idea of the person you want to work with, which matches the, your uh, community needs. Uh, I think that that is essential. While parallel, I mean, obviously you, you're open and you, 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 you work with everybody, but to have a little bit more of a specialism, I think is good because you will research more about that. You will like everything, to be honest, that, that Amy already said very eloquently. You, you, you specialize on something, therefore people will come to you because they know that you're keeping up to date with that particular um, condition because you you are a little bit more knowledgeable in the particular condition because you had much more experience of treating the particular condition. And then at the same time, if it's a particular condition that you enjoy or it's a particular type of approach you enjoy, then there is there is, it's not like Tamar said, it's not like going to work. So I think from a marketing perspective, but also from a professional development perspective, having a niche is certainly, certainly useful. So in hindsight, I probably I should have had my own niche, but I entered into myself just because I've been for quite a lot of years in practice. Lovely. Thank you for sharing that, Anna. That's great. Um, and yeah, I think that's sort of a similar theme of what sort of Tamer was saying that, um, you know, you do by having uh, a specialism or a niche or sort of a special interest that you are able to develop your learning on that subject more and further. So you're, you're more comfortable to provide the treatments to your clients, therefore they're more comfortable sort of in your company. Um, but also you can sort of provide uh, something which is that much more developed than yeah. maybe a standard treatment. What, what I often find though, that the, the therapist wants a niche because they really like it, but that niche doesn't match what the community they are in. Right. Um, and that, that, that is a problem. So you have to have a look at the community. So where you are, would you be able to attract, uh, you know, if you take a particular niche, would you be able to attract uh, those type of clients? So it, it's, you know, it, we need to be able to understand who we are, um, who we provide our services to. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, completely. Because, yeah, you can't sell a, a service to people that aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> Great. Lovely. Oh, well, these are all um, really amazing um, points that you've made and definitely a lot of food for thought. Um, does anybody have uh, sort of any final uh, words of advice for uh, new therapists uh, who are thinking of starting out and perhaps what they can do as a first step? Yeah, Tamer, go for don't it. Think about, don't think about niche. That's, that's the first step to do. Just go with the flow. There is the thing with new, with new therapists that there is a lot to learn. There is, it's not about just a treatment. It's not about the massage. It's the, the journey includes, again, depending on whether someone is working at the clinic or working on their own, but there is a lot, the journey includes a lot of elements. It's not only about the treatment and it's not only about the speciality. It's, uh, yeah, other many different treatments, the possibilities, uh, what am I to find out the passion, your passion, you need to practice, you need to keep practice so that you, you feel what you're comfortable with or not. Uh, so if, if we're talking about an advice for new therapists, don't think about the niche, just go, what, focus on one thing, getting better, and that's it. When you get better, you will develop this passion you will understand the passion that you have more 
Uh, sometimes we're deceived by some stuff that we, oh, I've seen this person doing uh, a beautiful thing. I want to learn that. That's my passion. No, that's not your passion. That's what you saw and you liked. Your passion is what you are comfortable with, what you are, you are happy to stay in the next, let's say, five years, doing every single day without getting bored of it. So, um, yeah, I would say, to be honest, as, as the first step, don't think about the niche. That's something that just comes either progress naturally throughout time or you will have in three years time, you will have enough knowledge and enough understanding to decide. Yes, that's where I want to go. So, sorry. Yeah, so, I think, long, no, no, I think, having, <laughs> um, I think you're quite right. And, and certainly just thinking about my own experience of, of my sort of progression through learning massage and after, after I uh, learned holistic massage, I went back and I did uh, remedial and sports, kind of quite certain that I wanted to um, work uh, in that sort of sector, in the sports sector. Um, but then having done the training, I realized actually I don't like working with this particular clientele very much. And I found it very hard work and the expectation of having um, sort of uh, really unbearable pressure was kind of there all the time. And I was having to have that conversation and persuade people that that wasn't always necessary I find that very wearing um and so but oh, it, it, that didn't really matter at the end of the day my 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 sort of um my desires of what I wanted to deliver as a therapist of who I was just that just developed and changed um but the great thing is I use all of those skills that I learned doing remedial and sports and that sort of more advanced knowledge of how the body works of injury and I employ that in the way that I work more holistically now so when people come to me they uh, get a really balanced treatment of something that is still very sort of nourishing and relaxing but sort of employs a, a more advanced view on on the body and, and how to work with different tissues with different techniques so um, I think um, although my desire sort of changed of what I wanted to do actually it was you know it's really given me a new niche and a better niche for, for who, who, who I am in the long term. So um, yeah, don't be afraid to let your uh, sort of intentions develop and change because that's just a totally natural cycle of when you're starting out where you think you're going and then where you end up going and where you continue to go after that. So. <laughs> and, that and, and your story, basically what, what happened that you, you, you found or you explored a new possibility that, that wasn't there in your mind when you started your studies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's full of beautiful possibilities, basically. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, endless possibilities. And there's, yeah. there's so many within the therapy world. You, you know, the, the world is your oyster. There's so many things that you could tap into. Um, so, yeah, I think sort of keep, keep trying stuff, keep going for different treatments as well. That's such a nice way to experience things and see if you like it. Does anyone else want to uh, add anything? Uh, yeah, I was just going to just echo what Tamer said and, and, and just quickly say that, again, just to reiterate that point that I'm seven years in and I still don't know what my physical niche, my actual treatment niche is. And, and there shouldn't be, I, I'm happy to just let it happen organically and see what, see what happens. Um, because there is if you're a new therapist you need to be level three trained you need to do put the the hours in doing your your your, your level three massage or your level three reflexology whatever it is you're doing so that will take you a while anyway and then getting your clients in and then you're only going to know what your niche is once you've worked on a hundred hundreds of different bodies and you've you've experienced all the different shapes and sizes and different types of people and different mannerisms and you know um sports people people old you know elderly people uh, children whatever it might be um only then are you gonna know oh actually i really i think i'm really good at this specific thing um because otherwise like you say if if, if you just come in straight away and go right i want to be a, a a knee specialist that just you know whatever it might you put all your eggs in that basket and then you might you get into it and you've done all your marketing and then you're like bloody hell i hate this this is boring i don't even like knees you, you, you know you know so i do think you need to um you need to just do it you need to get to know the human body and the person that you're working with um it might be 20 years down the line that you end up finding your niche you know that you that you think you're actually good at and then you discover you uh 
you, you like knees in the end and then you become the knee specialist you know so um yeah so anyway that's me thank you uh, you do make me laugh um don't even like knees <laughs> Amazing. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining uh, today and uh, thank you for all your comments uh, as usual. Um, so I uh, look forward to seeing you again next time. And thank you for all those that tuned in. If you'd like to be alerted uh, to when the next episode goes live, just hit the subscribe button or sign up to the newsletter uh, in the description below. So until next time, see you then. <laughs>